हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल द चकीफस कॉमर्स क्लासेस सो इन माई प्रीवियस सेशन आई डिस्कस्ड विथ यू ऑल अबाउट कॉल्स इन एरियाज ओके वे वी डिस्कस्ड वॉट डू यू मीन बाई कॉल्स इन एरियाज एंड हाउ यू आर सपोज टू सॉल्व इट वेन इट कम्स इन टू अ प्रॉब्लम so we know that calls in arrears is the amount which a shareholder has not yet paid therefore his shares are forfeited or cancelled so now in today's video we'll study about what you mean by calls in advance so when the shareholder pays a part or full amount of the calls not at called up so the amount so received on share is calls in advance it means he has paid it much before the company calling and reminding the shareholder to pay the amount so this amount is paid in advance to the company by the shareholder so it is known as calls in advance so this calls in advance it is credited to the calls in advance account and in the balance sheet it is showed under the heading current liabilities because this is something that is already paid in advance so this is the opposite of calls in arrears so let's move on to the pro forma entries first case is when you receive the call money with allotment so you will write it as bank account debit to share allotment account and to calls in advance account the narration being allotment money on shares received along with calls in advance on shares the second is when calls in advance is adjusted with the call money okay it means it is paid with the call money so here you will write bank account debit calls in advance account debit to share first call account and the narration is bank share call money received and calls in advance adjusted so let's start with our first problem on calls in advance the question says that tata company limited invited applications for 16000 equity shares of rupees 10 each at a premium of rupees 3 per share so in this problem we also have premium application is rupees 2.5 Five zero allotment is five. First call is two and second call is three point five zero. Applications were received for sixteen thousand shares and allotment was made. All the money was duly received. Mr. Prasad, who was holding four thousand shares, paid the entire amount along with the first call. Pass the necessary journal entries. So in this example or in this problem, we can see that first of all there is premium. So we have to record premium in the allotment. Secondly, we can see that rupees four thousand shares which were which Mr. Prasad had, he has paid the entire amount. All right. In the previous problem, we read that so and so amount was not paid by Mr. So and so. When it is not paid, it is calls in arrears. When it is like paid the entire amount, then it means it is calls in advance. So let's start with our general entry. First is bank account debit to equity share application account. We got forty thousand by multiplying sixteen thousand into two point five zero. All right. Moving on to the second, that is equity share application account debit to equity share capital account. Again, the amount will be the same, and the narration will be bank application money transferred to share capital account. Now moving on to the third entry. So as we can see that there is premium of rupees three. So we will record this entry as equity share application account debit to equity share capital account and to security premium account. So let's start solving from here. Security premium. As we can see in the sum, it's mentioned it's rupees three. So rupees three into sixteen thousand. So three into sixteen thousand will give you forty-eight thousand. All right. Then what you do then? You come to this entry, equity share allotment account. So what is the total of allotment? It is rupees five per share. Five per share into sixteen thousand. It will give you eighty thousand. So then you subtract these two. That is eighty thousand minus forty eight thousand. The difference that you get here is the equity share capital account. Always start with solving premium first, then the total allotment, then subtract the two, and the answer that you get here is the equity share capital account. And the narration is being allotment money on sixteen thousand equity shares at rupees ten each, including premium at rupees three. Moving on to the fourth entry, that is bank account debit to equity share allotment. And the narration is being allotment money received eighty thousand and eighty thousand. Moving on to the fifth entry, that is on first call equity share first call account debit to equity share capital. The amount is rupees thirty two thousand. That is sixteen thousand multiplied by two. All right. C. Irrespective of whether it is calls in arrears or calls in advance, the first entry of calls will always be the same. Only the second entry is affected. In case of calls in arrears as well as in case of calls in advance. So in this sum we have calls in advance. So our sixth entry will be 
bank account debit to equity share first call account to calls in advance account as i said that calls in arrears and calls in advance they both are the opposite so calls in arrears we record it on the debit side so the opposite of that is calls in advance so we will record it on the credit side okay and the narration is being first call money received along with calls in advance now let's see how we are supposed to solve it always start from the bottom okay we can see calls in advance so mr prasad who is holding 4000 shares he paid the amount along with the first call so calls in advance amount is 4000 4000 multiplied by the share that is first call 4000 into 2 will give you 8000 now if you multiply it with 2 you will get it as 8000 here but here you can see my answer is a bit different so why is it because you have to read the question again the question says mr prasad who was holding 4000 shares paid the entire amount along with the first call okay so it means he has paid the entire amount with the first call like the second call amount also he has paid it with the first call itself so here you will not multiply 4000 into 2 that is 8000 you will multiply it with this amount why because it's clearly mentioned here that mr prasad who was holding 4000 shares paid the entire amount along with the first call so it means he did not wait for the second call but he paid it along with the first call itself see many of the students make this mistakes that's why i started with explaining 4000 into 2 Always remember this is calls in advance and not calls in arrears. Here you will not multiply four thousand into two. Why? Because Mr. Prasad he has already paid the entire amount with the first call, the entire amount of second call. So here the rate of second call is three point five. Therefore, here in the first call entry you will multiply four thousand into three point five, and that's how you will get rupees fourteen thousand. Okay. Then you come to equity share first call account. So what you will do here is total amount is sixteen thousand. and the rate of first call is 2 so 16000 multiplied by 2 you will get as 32000 as both the amounts on the credit side total them up you will get as 46000 so put it in the debit side all right moving on to the entry number 7 equity share second call account debit to equity share capital account so here we get the amount as 56000 all right how we get 56000 16000 into the rate that is 3.5 you will get as 56000 and moving on to the last entry that is bank account debit calls in advance account debit to equity share second call account again start solving with this amount to equity share second call account we get as 56000 how we get as 56000 16000 multiplied by 3.5 all right so we get as 56000 then we move on to calls in advance account how did we get this 14000 you have to multiply this 4000 into the rate that is 3.5 that is 14000 or you can see from here also the calls in advance will be the same for both the calls so or, or else you just write this 14000 here or else you calculate 4000 into 3.5 that will be 14000 all right now how will you get this amount one amount is on the credit side one is on the debit side so subtract the two 56 minus 14 will give you 42000 so 42000 will come in the bank account that is bank account debit 42000 calls in advance account debit 14000 to equity share second call account that is 56000 all right so this is how you solve the eight entry now you will notice that calls in advance i have recorded on the debit side why i have recorded on the debit side because here we are adjusting the calls in advance okay and here we are recording the calls in advance therefore here you will write it on the credit side and here in the last entry as we are adjusting therefore it will be debited all right so i hope you understood how i got these amounts this 56000 i got it by 16000 into the rate that is 3.5 then calls in advance this 14000 you can either take from here directly 14000 as it will be the same or else you multiply 4000 into 3.5 Then what you do, you subtract fifty six thousand and fourteen thousand. When you minus this two, the answer you get is forty two thousand. All right. So after you finish recording all the entries, the next step is to total the debit as well as the credit side. So after totaling, I have got four lakh thirty thousand on both these sides. So after totaling, I have got four lakh thirty thousand on both these sides. So this was one problem on calls in advance. I hope that you all have all understood the problems on calls in advance whatever I have explained today if still there are any queries or any problems then please put it down in the comment section 
also if you liked my today's video then please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you